Okay guys, uh, William Agnew here. Welcome back to the next part of our iPad mini backlight solution training or repair training. And what we're gonna do, or rework repair training. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you guys exactly the, the problem. Now, where we are in this, uh, this, this rework or repair uh, as we stand is we've already replaced the, this was a broken digitizer, all right? So what we've already done is we've already replaced the broken digitizer. We test the new digitizer and everything. It works fine. But in the process, what happened is the technician did not do his order of operation properly. What he did not do is he did not remove or disconnect the battery, which is located right here. This is your battery. And right here is your battery connection. And let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a closer look at this. So you can see exactly what I'm pointing at. But right here is where you guys will see your battery is connected. This is what you should always, you should always power down your unit and disconnect your battery before you do any other disconnections. Because what happens again, and I'll restate this, what happens is if you don't disconnect this battery, even if you're powered off, you still have a completed circuit that has, there's capacitors in here that hold voltages also. This is a huge capacitor, which is a battery, so this circuit still is live. Regardless of whether you turn it off or not, parts of this circuit is still live, so you still have voltage and current flowing through this circuit. So what happens is, as soon as you start disconnecting things, you start to impact how that current is flowing through the circuit. So many times you get a voltage drop, right, when you take things apart, and then what happens is when you put them back in, you get a current surge. It's, it's too quick, it's too powerful, it's too immediate, it's too much of a shock to some of these very small components, all right? And essentially what happens is that, that, that fuse, which is designed to blow when you get a, when you get a, a current surge, does indeed blow but it's designed to do that because what it's doing is protecting the entire circuitry so you don't destroy the entire thing. So what happens is if you take it into say, you know, Apple or whoever or bring it to your shop, what they can then do is repair it because the, the circuit is not destroyed, it's just that the fuse is blown. It's almost the same thing as the fuse at your house in your circuit box at home, right? If you have a power surge, many times your circuit box will trip, uh, it'll knock things off and it protects the rest of the circuitry in your house from being destroyed. Well, the same thing happens here. So again, you wanna make sure that you're disconnecting your battery right here before you disconnect any other ribbon cable or anything on this board and make sure you power down first, all right? And that's even when you do your check, guys, because a lot of times what'll happen, especially in a digitizer replacement, uh, what happens a lot of times is guys, they wanna check it before they actually close it up, which makes a lot of sense, right? You wanna check your digitizer right up here, which is up here your glass, especially if you're doing a digitizer replacement, which is gonna be your most common repair is gonna be your digitizer replacement, right? So if you're doing a digitizer replacement, obviously you wanna check that digitizer before you close this thing completely up to make sure your digitizer is fully functional. So in doing that, what you wanna make sure is you plug this back in after you plug all of these up to check. Because many times, I'll tell you what happened in this particular scenario, what happened was, the, the technician did the right thing in the, in the beginning where he unplugged the battery, right? But when he went to do his second check, what he forgot to do was unplug the battery again, right? So he, then he disconnected before he unplugged the battery. When he went to plug everything back up, he got the backlight issue because he had blown the fuse. And I'm gonna show you and demonstrate to you guys right now what it looks like when the fuse is blown, okay? So here's your battery. Here's your LCD connector right here, and then under that is your digitizer connector. So, and then I'm gonna fold this LCD over, so hopefully you guys can see what this backlight issue looks like. I wanna demonstrate for you guys what it looks like, so you'll know what to look for when you have this issue. So let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this power button. And what you guys, hopefully you guys can see right here, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little apple right here. It's very dark. And I'm trying to, hopefully you guys can see that. But right here, it's a very dark apple. And I'll zoom in, hopefully you can see it. But you see that apple is very, very dark. That's a backlight issue. And what happens is you can't see anything but this apple is what happens, all right? And then you can see it pop on, so you can kind of see it, but there's no way it's the, uh, the illumination backlight is bad. So that you know, hey, uh, my fuse may be blown, okay? 
So that's the, that's the perfect way to know and test if it's bad, okay? If it's a backlight issue. Everything else is functioning fine, it's just that it's not illuminating properly. So what we gotta do is go to the next step in the, uh, in the process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this back, put it back just like we had it. You wanna be careful when you're folding because you wanna be careful not to damage your ribbon cables up here, guys. We still have ribbon cables connected, right? So I just wanna make sure I don't damage anything. Now before I unplug, and this is the very important part, before I disconnect anything in this unit, what I'm gonna do is unplug my battery. All right, that's the first thing I wanna do is unplug my battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that battery, right? And then I'll go ahead and disconnect my LCD. All right, again, you guys wanna be careful because those ribbon cables are very easily damaged, okay? So my LCD is now disconnected. I can go ahead and take that out, kind of lay it to the side, make sure I don't damage it or do anything bad to it. And then up here in the left side, same place, I have right under my LCD, I have my digitizer connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that. Again, you guys gonna wanna be very careful not to damage anything. So we wanna get under there, and once we do that, we can move our digitizer to the side so we don't risk damaging anything on our digitizer. Now, alrighty, so in the next part of, uh, of what we're doing in our process, we're gonna introduce our multimeter. Now, a multimeter um, is what we're gonna use to test to see if our fuse is still uh, good or bad, if it's functioning or not functioning. Again, guys, what you gotta understand about your fuse is your fuse is like an analogy. I like using analogies as you guys probably already see it. A, a, a fuse is like a bridge, okay? And that bridge is either up or that bridge is down, okay? If that bridge is down, that means cars can go across it, which means current can flow across it, right? If that bridge is down, that means that bridge is connected. If that bridge is up, that means that bridge is open. Cars cannot go over it, which means the circuit is open, so current cannot go over it, all right? So what we're testing um, and what we're gonna be doing, testing that with is this multimeter. And what this multimeter is gonna tell us is whether that bridge is up or whether that bridge is down, or essentially whether that, um, that fuse is blown or whether that fuse is still working. If that fuse is working, then the analogy would be that that bridge is down. If that fuse is not working, the analogy would be that that fuse, uh, that that bridge is up, right? So current can't go over it. So that's what, this multimeter is gonna allow us to do. It's gonna allow us to test to see if that uh, fuse is still functioning properly. If it's not, then we should get what? Exactly, we shouldn't get anything. We should get nothing. No readings, no beeps, no anything. If that fuse is working properly, then it's connected, which means we should get a beep. So the way we can do this, and the way we can do this is we can test it with our multimeter. So what we wanna do is just turn our multimeter on, we're gonna set our multimeter. This multimeter does a, a, a slew of different things. It has voltage, current, resistance, um, all of that stuff that you can learn if you take the class at Cellular Repair School. We get deeper into what this is and how to use it. For the, you know, it's, we're only gonna stay with what's applicable for the, for the actual uh, training that we're doing. So we're gonna talk just to that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our multimeter on our continuity setting, which is our sound, okay? And what we can do, once you set it on sound, which is right here, you can actually take your leads, you can touch your leads together. And that's basically saying that, hey, this circuit is completely closed. That's a closed circuit. So if that circuit's closed, then we should, we should get that, all right? Now, how does that work in regards to your fuse? Well, if your fuse, if the bridge is down, right, it's closed. So if we touch one side of the fuse to the opposite side of the fuse and it's working because it's closed, we should get this sound. If we touch one side of the fuse to the opposite side of the fuse and we don't get anything, that means it's open, it's broken, it's not making a complete circuit. Does that make sense? So if we get that, we're good. If we don't get that, we're not good, okay? Does that make sense? That's how we're gonna use this multimeter to test the functionality of our fuse. So let's, so let's go ahead and do that. Ready? So right here is our fuse. Our fuse is right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our leads and we're gonna put our leads on one side of the fuse, and we're gonna put our lead on the opposite side of the fuse, and we get nothing. 
There's no beep, no anything. All right, and we can move that around, test it again. And as you see, if we touch these together, they work. But touching these on opposite sides of the fuses, nothing. We get nothing. Which signals us that our fuse is bad, all right? So that lets us know, hey, the next step we need to do in the process is two things. We're gonna do what we talked about before. We're either gonna jump our fuse, right? Which is totally bypassing the fuse, which is okay, it can be done. It's probably not the safest bet because the fuse, again, is there to protect our circuit. So in case we have that power surge or that uh, current surge, again, it protects the circuit. If it's not there, there's no protection. So essentially what can happen is we can destroy our board or we can remove this particular part and place a new one on. So what we're gonna do in the next step of the process is we're gonna show you guys the method of replacement, removing a, uh, this component and replacing this component. Now I will tell you guys, you need to do this with a microscope. This is the level three advanced soldering. If you don't have a microscope, then I would, I would advise you not to try this process. These components are so small that what typically happens with guys who don't use microscopes or who are not good at level three soldering, what tends to happen is they do more damage because they're using tips. Sometimes the tips on their soldering irons are too big um, and you go in and you try to remove this and you remove everything else. And now you have six components that are all over the place when really you were just trying to remove and replace one. Or you bridge all of these components because your solder wire was too big or you put too much solder on it or whatever the case may be you just weren't skilled enough to actually do that process. So you have a couple of options with that if you're gonna be doing any soldering. You can have somebody else do it for you or you can attempt to learn and do it yourself. Here at Cellular Repair School, we teach you guys level three soldering where you will be skilled enough to actually remove and replace and you're gonna be using microscopes and the right equipment to do that particular type of repair effectively, okay? So in the next part of this process, we're gonna show you guys exactly how to do the removal and replacement of the chips on the board. All right, see you guys in the next segment.